Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Autogefühl. Today with me AJ and welcome to the all new, first ever Mercedes C-Class All-Terrain. Might be the first ever C-Class All-Terrain, but it's not the first All-Terrain. Remember the E-Class All-Terrain? That's been around for a little while and has enjoyed some pretty good success, so they thought, why not put it into the C-Class? Of course, this is a crossover estate. We've seen this, for example, with the Audi A6 and the A4 All-Road, and of course, Volvos of the uh, yesteryears, as well as the newer uh, cross countries, are uh, kind of taking this philosophy um, as well. Up front, it is very similar to the C-Class, but there is a little bit of a differentiation in terms of the grille design and the bumper design. You get LED lights as standard, but you can also get the optional digital lights, which can project those really cool graphics onto the road for the assistant systems, for example. Plus, they're all very intelligent in terms of, you know, casting light to the sides, as well as if you're climbing a hill or descending a hill, um, they provide a lot more uh, flexibility there as well. The C-Class All-Terrain is 4.75 meters long. Now that's a tiny little bit longer than the standard C-Class Estate, and that's because we have these slightly more redesigned off-road bumpers. It's a little bit taller because of course there is 40 millimeters more ground clearance now. It's a little bit wider also because we have these cladding, this black plastic, on the wheel arches. Speaking of the wheels, you get 17 inches as standard. You can also optionally get the 19 inches. Here we have a very happy midway 18 inch wheels. Nothing too fancy, but I think it goes well with the black wheel arches. The entire silhouette of the all-terrain is very much C-Class Estate. You can only get this in a C-Class Estate. Of course, this is the all-wheel drive version, the 4MATIC. So it's 55% to the rear and up to 45% to the front. This weighs about 1,700 kilograms, so it's it's a pretty heavy um, estate, but it's, it's, it's not as heavy as some of its elder siblings. And very clean, elegant lines all along the side. Even though it is an off-road design vehicle, you have a lot of chrome on the window frame, on the door handles, for example, and even on the roof rails. So it still has a very executive, uh, very refined look about it. And I always like this very soft curve here at the rear of the car. So let me know what you guys think of this design. The rear of the C-Class All-Terrain is again very similar to the C-Class Estate. But of course we have a slightly more off-road-esque rear bumper with more black cladding. Of course this might look a little bit like a bash plate here in the back and in the front. But they end just about over there. So this is not really very functional. And, uh oh well, those are clearly, clearly fake exhaust tips. But, you know, I think I, I for one, have gotten used to fake exhaust tips. Have you guys? It's about time we kind of accept this. What do you guys think? Anyway, the trunk is an estate, 490 liters, very usable, very flat, as you can see. Of course, you can tumble the seats down very easily with just a flick of a switch like so they lie completely flat and now you get 1510 liters of boot space so very versatile you can carry your mountain bikes drive up a mountain maybe we'll see <laughs> because of the all-terrain and uh, go on an adventure here we have the key fob i really like this design but of course we have a keyless entry so the door opens as soon as you touch the door handle and a really nice inviting cabin. I love a car with a light interior. The door is also really nice and padded. Good materials, good build quality. One constant piece over here. I like the knurled finish on the seat controls as well. Good size door pockets. And I always like the Burmester speakers in Mercedes cars. I think it has an elegant look to it. If we peek inside the cabin, well, this is pretty similar to the C-Class Estate. This is the avant-garde design that we see. I love the steering wheel. I love the aluminium in the middle. And you have controls on the left and right. For the 12.3 inch screen, you can control that here with the left hand side. It's mostly capacitive, but you do have buttons as well. Being the all-terrain, there's a spe special off-road view that you see here, which shows you the tilt and uh, lean angles, as well as a compass in the middle but you can of course change it to the more classic view. You can set the uh, adaptive cruise control uh, systems over here. 
So overall, a very nice um, and very slick system. And you can also have the entire navigation on the screen if you would like. So very versatile. There's also a head-up display with a special off-road view here in the all-terrain. You can see the roll and the pitch in the compass. So kind of the same as the off-road view in the instruments, but it's pretty cool to have it. In the middle, we have this gorgeous floating 11.9 inch screen. Again, this is optional, but this is where you can control the main infotainment system. Right on top of that, we have three vents also backlit with the ambient lighting. I really like this wood in the back as well. I think the interiors of Mercedes uh, these days are really, really pretty. But this system controls a lot of functions. This is a little bit of an updated uh, MBUX where actually now you see that there's always the navigation in the back. They call this the zero layer. So you can have this with um, you know, the navigation and your smaller controls down here for the other systems instead of having different widgets. I think it's a good improvement. And if you go to the main screen, of course, you see some of the special Mercedes comfort features. So you have massaging seats for the driver and the co-driver. There's also the seat kinetics, which slowly moves different parts of the seat just to kind of uh, ease the tension in your body. There's also something called as an energizing comfort, which gives you a breeze that whisks you away to the seaside, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to go to the seaside. It's freezing outside. But um, you can go to the main menu with this home button here and uh, you also have smartphone connection but you can also access these systems with your steering wheel as well so it's also easy to do this although it takes a little bit more time it's also a little bit more tricky you have to take your eyes off the road i would always recommend you use just the system here unfortunately to make this perfect for me i would have loved to have more buttons i don't mind so much the air conditioning system down here it's fine it's easy there's a little haptic, uh, not a haptic, at least an audio uh, that stimulates a clicking sound. That's fine. But, you know, down here we have the a lot of different um, functions, which you do have to press, but there's no individual buttons. So you have, for example, the dynamic uh, selector. And being the all-terrain, you get two special off-road modes. There's the standard off-road mode that we saw here. And there's also the off-road plus mode which gives you even more low range um, tractability and even things like hill descent control. And we'll try to test these out later, but a standard you get eco and comfort, sport and individual. And yeah, see down here, I really wish there was a, a roller for the volume control and some more hotkey buttons. But overall, I think this is definitely an improvement and I'm excited to see what they do next. If you push this panel away, down here we see an inductive charging port, a couple USB-C slots, a couple beverage holders as well. And look at this, it comes back. And then if you push this button, the center armrest opens up to have uh, to reveal a further storage area with a couple other USB-C slots as well. Getting in is a little bit easier than the standard estate because we have 40 millimeters of extra ground clearance. So ingress is a little bit easier. But once you're in, it's really comfortable. So this is set to a comfortable position for me. I'm five foot eight or about 1.73 meters. Plenty of knee room. I can slide my feet under the seat as well. The recline of the backrest cannot be changed, but it is in a very relaxed position. There's a sunroof and a glass roof. So I feel connected to the outdoors. Thanks to this light interior, there's a lot of light as well. The outside two seats have heating as well so you're well catered to as well as you have two additional climate zones for the left and right passenger with air vents so again getting comfortable back here is really easy there's also isofix points for the child seats a center armrest with cup holders and you can tumble that part down and use it as a ski hatch you can get this car with two engine options a petrol and a diesel the C200 and the C220D. This is the C220D. It's a two liter uh, diesel engine, which makes 200 PS, or the uh, C200 is a 1.5 liter petrol, which makes 204 PS. They're both mild hybrid engines. They both obviously have four wheel drive with the 4 system. 
and they come mated with a 9G Tronic automatic transmission. As you can see, they are longitudinally mounted, so this is a rear wheel drive biased platform. Alright, so let's put the C-Class all-terrain through its paces off-road to really see if a crossover estate is as good as a SUV. So first I'm going to go to the off-road plus mode and on the main screen if I go to the info I have a nice off-road view. Now the standard all-terrain does come with a little bit of off-road plating so the underbody has some protection um, like we saw the bumpers but there's more near the engine as well you can optionally get the steel underbody protection. But we don't have that, and we'll see if that, uh, you know, runs into any trouble for us. But we're gonna start off on this very simple uh, dirt trail. So far, so good. But I'm gonna take a left up here onto this steep incline, and we'll see if there's any trouble. It's a little bit moist today as well, but so far, so good. The traction control in this off-road plus mode is even more sharper than the standard off-road mode, and it kind of acts like a locking differential because it's not allowing any of the uh, wheels to slip. And you can't even notice any of this working in the background. It's super easy, super smooth, super effortless. And that's what you want, right? From a Mercedes, it's all about effortless uh, capability. This also has hill descent control. So as you go further downhill, it automatically locks the speed to something that you've set beforehand. So it's in this case now at six kilometers per hour and I can just take that gently at the speed that I need or I can use the throttle to increase that ever so slightly. Sure, you don't have a great approach angle or a departure angle, angle or a breakover angle, but still, so far I have not faced any issues with that. The ground clearance is sufficient enough for trails like this. So yes, rock crawling and stuff like that, maybe not the most uh, you know, suitable for this, but especially if you're you know, working in the, in, in the forested area or in the snow and you have to haul you know, equipment to a work site or something like that, this is definitely more than capable. Plus because of the low center of gravity that you get with an estate, it's significantly more planted out on the road where let's be honest, most of the users will spend most of the time driving in this car. But I'm going to put it really to the test now. There's a 50% incline with wet polished stone track up ahead and I'm going to put my foot down and we'll see how easily or difficulty it might face and as you guys can see, wow, piece of cake for this. I'm actually pretty surprised. If you guys might remember, I was here with the G-Class uh, earlier this year to film another episode uh, at the Immendingen facility. And I was like, wow, okay, the G-Class is fantastic. It can do all of this, but hey, so can the C-Class all today. And I'm still cocooned in luxury with this nice ambient lighting, my air conditioning. I can have my seat massage on as well. So who said adventuring had to be brutal or painful? You can adventure in luxury as well. And because the C-Class all-terrain is smaller than the E-Class all-terrain, the compact dimensions also help when you have to maneuver in tighter spaces. Because to be honest, when you're off-road, small compact dimensions does make a big difference. Just because something is big doesn't necessarily mean it's better off-road. And because of the lighter weight, it also helps kind of scamper over these uneven surfaces with a lot more ease. I'm just running on standard winter tires. So even with that, you know, tracks like this are, are no problem. As you can see, there's also a lot of wet leaves and that also really hinders the traction. But um, this formatic system, shuffling power, 55 to the rear, 45 to the front, um, continuously managing this powered system delivery across the four wheels. You can see how well it works. Um, yeah, so a very smart car, so even a dumb driver like me can, can make it work. Now we're going to go back down that 50% incline. So let's see the ABS and the traction control, the hill descent control. Go crazy, foot's off the brake. 
feel a lot of slip, but in the end, I'm safe and sound down. The car is in one piece, no scratches, so I'm pretty impressed. Personal story first. I have a lot of experience and a very uh, special place in my heart for crossover estates because when I first turned 18, my dad had a Fiat Adventure Sport. Does anybody know that car? This was way back in 2009. And I had just gotten my license and I would just be dying to take that car out. Of course, it wasn't four wheel drive, but it did have that spirit of adventure because of that higher ground clearance, had off-road tires. I have a special, special liking towards these kinds of crossover estates. The starting price for the 200, uh, which is the petrol, the C200, is around 53,000. But the C220D starts at around um, 55,000. So it's not very cheap, but this is, a, this is a kind of a car for those who don't like that SUV kind of design. They don't like the, necessarily that really high uh, seating position, but you want to have a little bit of that rough road, off-road capability. And I think this is what uh, caters to that special niche segment the best. Sure, you have the bigger, you know, E-Class all-terrain, the A6 all-road in the V90 cross-country, but because the C-Class is a little bit smaller in dimension, it's a little bit more easier to manage. So, first impressions. Well, I always like a Mercedes interior. It's very luxurious, very plush. It caters to all your needs. But at the same time, as with most Mercedes diesel engines, it is a little bit grumbly, it is a little bit rough sounding, and you can hear it inside the cabin um, quite a bit, even at low speeds and low RPMs, even in comfort mode. It's not a deal breaker, and I personally don't mind a diesel clatter, but it's something to keep in mind if you're looking at one of these and you don't want that, then perhaps the petrol version is the right version for you. Visibility is pretty good. I always like to have my seat low down and that gives you a good view out forward because the ceiling, the roof line doesn't impede your view the lower you sit. Pretty decent windows and a pretty decent rear view mirror. It's really foggy so unfortunately I don't have the confidence to push this car but it does roll a lot more than the standard C-Class for sure so you can feel that around corners like this. Now they've achieved that higher ground clearance not just by increasing the suspension, but also the overall diameter, the effective diameter of the entire wheel. So rim and rubber is a little bit more. And that also is what affords it this 40 uh, millimeters of higher ground clearance. And that kind of shows because you do feel that squidgy, rubbery, leaning action when you go around corners, but it's fine. You also have in the back of your mind, you know that you also have that four-wheel drive system to provide the traction that you need in case you do start losing grip. The steering is, I would say it's, it's okay. It's not the most sporty. Of course, this is not even like the AMG line kind of a thing. You don't get that right now. It's just the avant-garde. So it has a good weight, but it doesn't necessarily give you a lot of feedback. But... Um, the size is really nice and the grip is really good. The seats are very comfortable, they're very plush, they hold you in. Um, even though they don't have a lot of side bolstering, um, they do a good job of keeping you in place. You also have the massaging, you have the seat kinetics and things like that, so it's very comfortable. Apart from the engine clatter when you're you know, at idle or when you're accelerating, um, otherwise it's not too loud, but in general the cabin is really hushed. So you would expect that, you would want a quiet and composed, um, kind of a refined interior, and this does deliver. The engine is fairly responsive, thanks to that mild hybrid boost. It does give you that sudden torque as soon as you demand it. The brake feel is also okay. It's not the most sharp, it does have a little bit of a wooden feel to it but it's not terrible. Again, because this is also kind of designed for off-roading, if you're driving down a gravel track at you know, slightly higher speed, 60, 70, 80 kilometers per hour, you don't want a very sharp brake because then you will just trigger the ABS. You want something a little bit more linear. 
dare I say, even a little bit more spongy so that you have um, a lot more play or a lot less uh, aggressive braking in the beginning part of the travel of the brake pedal and then it bites a little bit higher um, later on. So I think in that way, the progression of the brake feel suits the character of the all-terrain. Seats are also adjustable. The steering column is also automatic or electronically adjustable. So finding a seating position that suits your needs is very easy. There's also a lot of assistance systems. So you have your blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assist, um, driver drowsiness detection, adaptive cruise control. And these systems work in conjunction with the traffic sign recognition to give you also a semi-autonomous drive on autobahns. But they also work when you're here on country roads. So if I were to just set this speed limit now to 80 or 60 rather, what it's detecting here, then it will also slow down because it knows you're coming to a curve. It will speed up on its own. It will also keep it in the lane. So it gives you that kind of confidence, especially when you're traveling with family and if you might have noisy kids in the back, that you're not getting distracted when driving. So right now we've just started off, but it's still giving us pretty decent mileage. It's just giving us about seven liters for 100 kilometers. But if you're going to be driving for long distances on the highway, you can easily see numbers as low as five liters for 100 kilometers. So it is a very efficient engine, again, because of that mild hybrid boost. And it's not such a incredibly big, thirsty, powerful engine either. It's two liters, turbo four, 200 horsepower. I think those are very reasonable numbers. So overall, on the road, the C-Class All-Terrain does behave very, very good.